Continuing on a personal note, in what ways do you uh, combat McDonaldization in your own life? Well, I, I um, avoid uh, McDonaldized uh, settings um, as much as I possibly can. And um, I always equip that the students will always ask me, do I ever go to McDonald's? That's a usual question that I'll get. And I'll say, um, uh, it's my ideal place to go when I have to go to the men's room. Because <laughs> um, generally throughout the world, one of the things you can count on is the McDonald's restroom is going to be cleaner than most of the other competition. So, and, and it always seems to me kind of a strike, I'm striking a blow for freedom by going into McDonald's um, urinating and, and then leaving without buying anything. So um, I'm not sure that's uh, uh, akin to um, Paul Revere or, or any kind of uh, Nelson Mandela or uh, uh, any kind of revolutionary <laughs> like that, but that's as close as I come to revolutionary sort of act. So, um, you know, the problem, though, is that if one wants to lead a non-McDonaldized life, it's very difficult to do it. It's part of the iron cage of McDonaldization idea. That is, uh, it's hard to find non-McDonaldized settings. And even the settings that you think of are not going to be McDonaldized turn out when you go in there that they have internalized more and more of these McDonaldized kinds of principles. What advice do you give to students and others who want to resist McDonaldization in their own lives? Well, I have a long uh, chapter in which I talk about um, how individuals, groups, communities, organizations can resist McDonaldization. Um, and part of that is a rather long list of specific actions that individuals can take. Um, so one that I, I have had in there for a long time is uh, uh, do not take children to McDonald's, but if you must take children to McDonald's, blindfold them. Um, so in an earlier edition, I got an email from a student, absolutely enraged student, who was uh, furious at me. She said, how could you possibly recommend that parents take their children to um, McDonald's and blindfold them? Do you know how much, what kind of a traumatic effect that's going to have on children, and on and on. And I had to tell her that I was, it was just tongue-in-cheek. I was just joking uh, sometimes. I, mean, I, think one, I think one of the strengths of McDonaldization is that it's a book with a sense of humor. I try to have a sense of humor in that. I try to have a sense of humor. It's kind of whistling to the gallows sort of thing. I try to have a sense of humor about these, these kinds of things. Um, so uh, now I have a little uh, footnote there which says some of these suggestions may be tongue-in-cheek kinds of suggestions. But the, the serious point is that there are lots of things that individuals can do. The, 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 the easiest thing is don't go there. You know, cook, cook a hamburger from scratch at home. I mean, I know it's a right. radical idea in a modern America, but there are those kinds of things. There are certainly um, mom-and-pop kind of restaurants or non-McDonaldized settings all over the place that, that one can go, um, although it takes some effort. Um, if you drive from New York to Washington... On the uh, on 95 and the and the Jersey Turnpike, um, it, it's a perfect example of the Iron Cage because if you want to eat along the way, you get off at any uh, stop. Mm -hmm. All you have are fast food chains. There's no other alternative to that. And so, um, what you're forced to do, if you're really serious about it, is you got to get off the highway, maybe pay your toll. And of course, what you're immediately going to find are fast food restaurants. Mm -hmm. But if you're willing to wander off the road long enough, you're going to find some local, we used to call Greasy Spoon, and, 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 uh, and, um, and find a restaurant. So it's, it, the problem for individuals it's, is it's, a, it's difficult uh, to do this in an iron cage kind of environment, but it's still possible to do it. But there are also things that local communities can do, uh, keeping McDonald's out, keeping McDonald's at bay. As you know, if you don't keep it, at least at bay, your whole community is going to be McDonaldized. And, and in fact, I think as I travel around the United States and the world, what you see is more and more areas which are made up only of McDonaldized uh, operations of one kind or another. There are important organizations that are involved in opposing McDonaldization. The, the two I always talk about are Mix Spotlight, which is the uh, website um, organized by a group in Great Britain. Uh, that um, were sued by McDonald's in a libel suit, in a famous libel suit, and they have been a kind of global center for, op uh, for opposition to McDonald's. 
And then probably the most important movement out of Italy is the slow food movement. There are um, what are called convivia, which are local slow food organizations uh, throughout the United States and throughout the world. And um, they, uh, as the name suggests, uh, they are opposed to fast food. They are in favor of, of slow food in all its, its meanings. And, and basically um, uh, what they want is, is humanization as opposed to the dehumanization of, of McDonald's.